My question for you is, I really admired at that time what you were doing for Ukraine, and I'm curious about what the new administration means for your company. So the new administration, in regards to Ukraine or generally? Generally is fine, but however you feel comfortable. All right. Generally, the ceiling for positive change is much higher. And the point that I try to make with some of my friends who are more left-leaning, and you know, I was fired because I gave $9,000 to uh, anti-Clinton group, so you can guess where I fall. But I, I argue with some of my well-meaning but more liberal colleagues, as Reagan would say, and I say, look, whether or not you agree with individual decisions, the variance day to day, the ceiling for positive change is certainly much higher. I'm actually quite optimistic. I think that things are gonna happen that never would have happened previously. I think we will be able to cut spending in a very big way. I think that that will force people to tighten their belts and think hard about where we're spending money and develop more effective techniques. Necessity is the mother of invention. If there are things that our government needs to be doing and they find themselves with less money, given competent people in the role, they will figure out how to innovate and do better. We've always done that as a country. There's, really, there's never been catastrophic failures in our country that were because we couldn't figure out how to be more technologically savvy. It's, it's, it just hasn't happened. Anything that we've actually sent our minds to, we've done, whether it's going to the moon or trying to build better databases. So I think we can do that. With Ukraine specifically, I hate to, I hate to, I hate to abdicate responsibility for this. You know, I, we've had stuff as Anderl in Ukraine since the second week of the war. I met with Zelensky before the war, and I met with him again in Kyiv during the war. I've been to Ukraine to help train operatives in how to use Andrel's weapon system. So again, you could probably guess where I fall. But it is not appropriate for me, in my opinion, people ask why I'm not tweeting about this. Why are you not tweeting? I tweeted about us sending them more weapons, but why aren't you tweeting more about what should be done politically? My answer is simple, because I'm the executive of a weapons company making money selling weapons to Ukraine, to the United States for Ukraine, to the United Kingdom for Ukraine. Aren't we supposed to hate it when the military industrial complex advocates for longer, more extended wars in a way that clearly benefits their pocketbooks? My point is, whatever my opinion is, I'm not the right guy to be telling the message. I don't think it's the place of weapons companies to be weighing in on what conflicts are appropriate, how long they should go on, what quantity of weapons we should, I just don't. And so I think people, people see this too, are like, Palmer, would you work with this country? Would you work with that country? Would you enter this war? And my point is, you better hope that that decision is not made by me. You better hope <laughs> we're not moving into a, a dystopian future where corporate executives de facto control US foreign policy and military policy. Because if you believe in democracy at all, then those decisions need to be made by civilian leadership that is accountable to the body populace, not me. I'm not accountable to anyone. My board is three people, and I control all of them. It's not, it's, 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 so that, 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 that would that'd be my look, big picture and little picture. Good question, yes, Yoss. Thanks. If you enjoyed this episode, I'm going to be releasing all of the talks, all the keynotes from the Abundance Summit exclusively on exponentialmastery.com. You can get on-demand access there. Go to exponentialmastery.com.